Today is the 26th of December 2021 and so far this year I've run 2021 kilometers. Here's how I did it and what I learned along the way. In previous years I've always been really into running. I've relished trying to crank out the quickest times possible and always driving to become faster and stronger. The problem is I'd always get injured and so for the last couple of years the maximum distance I've ever managed to run in a single year is around 600 or 700 kilometers. I knew that I really wanted to change that and I wanted to get to a place where I could run long distances consistently and fall in love with running without being injured or sitting on the sidelines after pushing myself too hard, too fast, too quickly and ending up hurting myself. Thankfully this year I've managed to put all of that behind me and here are my top tips if you're in a similar position looking to do the same thing. My first and most important tip is you need to have a reason why. It's the simplest, but also the most difficult to achieve. Running is gonna take a lot of effort and you need to have a compelling reason why you want to go out and do it every single day. I see a lot of people having a reason why that looks like I wanna lose this many kilograms, why I want to run this race in this time. But personally, I don't think those are good reasons. The reason for that is once you achieve them, then what? You basically give up. There's no incentive to keep on going once you've climbed that mountain. For me it became obvious in November 2020 when I got COVID. It was as if someone just woke up one day and pulled out the rug from underneath my feet and I lost a lot of the fitness that I'd been building up over the last couple of years and I knew that I'd have to take this more seriously to get back on track. At the same time, uh, when I was off sick, I discovered Craig Adams' videos. He was hiking in these breathtaking, wonderful places and he gave me that extra incentive that I would be able to experience life much more richly if I was much fitter and healthier and I could do anything that I put my mind to without even thinking about it. So my reason why very quickly became I wanted to be the best version of myself so I wouldn't be held back if I decided to go on a hike or experience the natural world. Now that we've established the why and we understand that this is a long-term commitment, it's really important to get set some realistic goals. For me, looking back on previous years, it was always injuries that made me come unstuck. I'd get really into it, I'd run 160, 200 kilometers a month, and then bang, I'd injure myself really badly, whether it was my knees or my ankles, and I'd be out for months at a time. It would be really frustrating, I'd be sat there wishing I could run, but I couldn't, and then finally when I got back into running, I'd have lost all of the fitness which I accrued in the months where I was working really hard. Therefore, my first goal when it came to running was obvious. I wanted to develop as much cardiovascular endurance as I could in a safe manner, which would leave me not getting hurt so I could commit myself to running in the long term. The second goal was to stay as consistent as possible. I didn't want to be one of those people who would be able to commit themselves really well in January, but by the time May, June, July came around, I wouldn't be running anymore. So I know that I needed to keep focused and I made a plan to start running at least three times a week at the beginning. The most important thing here is that I never set out to run 2021 kilometers in 2021. It's just something that slowly happened. It evolved over time. When I was close to hitting that goal, I managed to up my mileage in a safe manner, pushing just 10% more every week until I was at a place where I could safely hit that goal. Right, now I've set my goals. My other big learning was that I didn't need to worry as much as I thought I did about pace. You'll notice in my goals there was nothing like run a sub 20 minute 5k. This is the kind of goal that I would set myself before when I used to keep getting injured because I'd be pushing myself so much, staring at the clock, making sure I'm hitting that pace every single kilometer. Maybe I will have a goal like that one day, but right now I'm much more concerned with developing a healthy long-term relationship with running. But with that in mind, for me right now, pace really didn't matter. I didn't need to worry every time that I went out, whether I was hitting my goal pace, what pace I was doing every kilometer, tracking everything, making sure I was improving week on week. All that I wanted to do was slowly build up my endurance so I could run longer and longer distances in a safe manner, staying injury free. I still do some speed sessions to improve leg strength, my cadence and overall running technique but I really like doing the Nike Plus Run Club guided workouts. What these do is they don't focus on specific pace per kilometre, they don't encourage you to keep looking at a watch to making sure you're hitting a time. Instead, they'll stick to things like running 75% of your maximum pace, or running your six out of 10 pace, or your eight out of 10 pace for a specific time period. So I understand that if I don't focus on pace like this, I'm never gonna be lining up for the Olympics. I'm probably not even gonna win my local 5K race but I'll be able to turn up on the start line every single day with a smile, knowing that I can run safely and happily and build up my endurance over the long term. I'm in a better position now with my running than I've ever been, all because I took my eyes off the clock and listened to my body. 
My next learning is get shoes that fit properly. I had problems with my knees previously. I was quite a heavy runner. I was carrying that extra weight. And so I was really invested in the vision of Hoka. I thought that extra cushioning on these shoes would really help with my running and make sure that I didn't get as injured as much. I got through a few of these pairs with no problems whatsoever. But when I really started upping my mileage and putting myself to the test, I found that I was getting some ankle pain because my shoes were not as stable as I would have liked. I went into a running shop and I decided that, you know, I wanted to get this pair because they looked this way or this pair because I really believed in the benefits that they were selling me. But realistically, what I needed to do was listen to the staff in there, get a proper running check on a treadmill, have someone analyze your ankle to see whether you pronate or not, and then get appropriate running shoes for your type of running and feet. When I did this, I found that my ankle pain almost disappeared overnight. It was really an eye opener that I didn't need to go out and, and fall into these marketing traps, but instead just find a shoe that really works with my feet, that supports me in my running and make sure that my ankles and feet and legs and my entire posterior chain is well supported for the way that it wants to operate. Next learning is recovery and strength training. After running itself, recovery is one of the most important things that you can do in order to avoid yourself getting injured. I've been bouncing around between using a foam roller or a massage gun or just stretching or maybe doing strength workouts. But the real secret is that you need to have a balance of all of those types of things in order to continue running without injury. There's no one single thing that will allow you to do some kind of shortcut. Everything is about taking care of your muscles, how they're feeling, paying attention to your body, and making sure that you have adequate recovery so that you can run properly the next time that you head out. Realistically, all the tools that I've got have got slightly different use cases. If I'm sore all over, then I'll have a foam roll before getting in a hot bath. If I've got a specific niggle, then that's where the massage gun will really come into play. And then every time after I run, I'll make sure I do some stretches just to maintain mobility. Strength training deserves its own mini point as it's the single biggest thing that's been identified by science to help you run without getting injured all the time. I used to really neglect this, but after a couple of months of running, I found that I had some pain around my ankles and around my knees and you know, it just wasn't feeling as good as I could have been and I felt some sort of injury coming my way. And um, so I sat down with a physiotherapist and really worked through to find a strength training routine that worked for me. I've been doing religiously ever since, two or three times a week. And I found that it's really helped me to feel more stable when I'm running, to feel more powerful in my stride. And ultimately it's helped me, I think, avoid some big injuries. My next learning is that your body will change dramatically when you go through a process like this. My legs have completely changed shape. I've lost about 15 kilograms overall all over my body. I look completely different now. My face has changed shape. I feel like a completely different person. The other thing is you'll become much more efficient and find some of your running easier. To compare this, I did some scientific tests. I've got a route near my house that I do almost every day, which is nine kilometers long. So I compared the data from when I ran this in January to December of the same year. So running the exact same route at the exact same pace in January, I would burn between 850 to 900 calories. In December, I now burn around 550 to 560 calories. That's a significant reduction and it shows sort of how much easier you'll find it all over your system when you apply yourself really heavily to something that you're passionate about. My next learning is that cross training will make you a much better runner. So after a while, when you've been running five times a week, six times a week for six months, etc., your progress will start to plateau. There's only so much that you can add on. If you're hitting that high mileage, you know, running doubles, all that kind of stuff, it's just placing extra strain on your legs. This is where cross training really comes into play. It's almost like a cheat code where I could go out running five times a week and then I could throw in a couple of swimming sessions and then my legs wouldn't feel any more tired because I'm working out my whole body instead of just focusing on my legs. But I'm also massively improving my cardiovascular endurance and getting all the benefits that a hard swim session brings me. All that kind of resistance training, that pushing, pulling, making sure I get through the water. It's all really beneficial for my fitness. So during the, this process, I've obviously picked up swimming. I go a couple of times a week now. I've picked up an exercise bike that I like to just spin out on and get my legs moving again after a really long run on, on sort of an active rest day. And I've also gone to the gym and started strength training about three times a week just to make sure that I'm, I'm really making the most of all the facilities that are available locally that will help me be the best athlete. Which brings me on to my next point. It's okay to seek help when you need it. You can't be everything by yourself. You can't be your own coach, your own physiotherapist, your own massage therapist, etc. There are people out there with dedicated jobs to help you get the best out of your running. It's a real game changer for me when I realized that I was having pain in my ankle. I could just go online and get an appointment with a physiotherapist in a couple of days. 
Yeah, it might cost me a little bit of money, but it's worth it in the long term. If I can pay £50 and get a proper rehab plan for improving my ankle strength and mobility, then it's worth the extra days that I'll get when I'm out on the track, feeling good, with no pain. It's really worth it in my opinion. Essentially, you want to find a great physio, or a great massage therapist, a great running coach, and you can build your own little team. They may be part-time, but you can call them whenever you need them. You don't see Elio Kipchoge just running a marathon by himself every single day. He has people around him that help him get the best out of himself so that he can set all of those records. And you're going to be a great runner, so you need people to help you along the way as well. My final point is all about gear. At first, I was one of those runners who was always running with one of those arm straps to hold my phone in. After a while, I found that a little bit inconvenient, a little bit one-sided, almost like I was lopsided when I was running. So I purchased one of the free train vests that you may have seen online. I found it to be a really good and practical solution. I used that for a good six, seven months. Uh, it did break on me once, but they were kind enough to replace it for me free of charge, which was great customer service, in my opinion. I have changed it up completely though, and I've got myself a new Apple Watch with a cellular connection, which means that I can stream on Spotify, track my run on Nike Plus, whilst connected to my earphones, and I don't need to take my phone with me at all. It's been a complete game changer for me and my running. It's completely freed me from having some kind of thing tied around my body. I always find that when you're sort of holding something and, and there's a little bit of movement there, it can be very distracting, and it gets in the way of your running form and just throws you off your stride a little bit. So having this watch has been a complete game changer for me. I feel like there's so much we could discuss on this topic. If you wanna see a video that's just dedicated to running gear, let me know. I feel like I've got so much to say about it. And that's it for this video. It's kind of a new style of video for me, so let me know if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this and keep running safely. See you next time.